if we specify the path two, we're gonna be at path two. And as you can see, then you can specify basically the different paths to your different microservice applications. Woo! <laughs> Hello there and thank you for joining me for another day of 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. If you're new to my face, my name is Anais. If you're just here to learn about Ingress, you're also at the right place. Now, why are we looking at Ingress today? Why am I looking at Ingress today? Isn't there already an Ingress video? Well, in the past, I've looked at Kubernetes services, specifically how can we spin up Kubernetes services and connect them to our deployments to access our application. Just a quick recap, you can have a look at the full video tutorial link below. Quick recap, there are three different types of Kubernetes services. The first one is cluster IP. Cluster IP is the default type of service that we would connect to our deployments and it basically allows us to communicate with that deployment. So basically configure communication between different deployments, for example. Now, uh, the cluster IP is highly dependent on the pod and the IP for that pod. So if the pod dies, our IP dies. So we use node pod instead, which is basically a static um, IP from that's accessible from within the cluster. Now, when we want to access our deployment or application from the outside world, which we usually want to do after we deploy an application, we would could use a load balancer. And a load balancer allows us basically to access that deployment. However, load balancers are generally, if deployed directly through a service, really insecure. You don't want to do it. What you want to use instead is either use a service mesh or an ingress. Now, I looked in the previous videos at service mesh. So you can check that out below. And I'm going to look at the next videos at specific deployments, tutorials on how you can spin up a service mesh, actually, for you, for your case. Anyway. And then the other one is an ingress. Now in the previous video on ingress, I set up ingress through a Helm chart. So if you're interested in the theoretical content on what ingress actually does in your cluster, check out the previous video link below. However, this video, I'm gonna set it up on a local Kubernetes cluster. In my case, I'm gonna use Docker desktop Kubernetes cluster. I'm not gonna use a managed Kubernetes cluster such as Azure or Google Cloud Platform or um, I don't know, AWS. No, I'm gonna spin everything up on my local Docker desktop cluster and show you how to make it work there. Now, this all relied heavily on the different common suggestions from people on Stack Overflow. You can find everything on Stack Overflow. <laughs> and not in the documentation. Makes me wanna cry, but that's how it is. So here it goes. So originally I was trying to follow the Kubernetes documentation on Ingress, which was to some extent helpful, to some extent at that end. So the thing is that a lot of the examples, that's the first thing you want to mention or highlight, a lot of the examples use a different API version, okay? So they it won't work on newer Kubernetes clusters that are not compliant with the older one, I guess. So you want to have this specification and through that specification, let me find it, you will have a different kind of, well, configuration in your specifications. So this will be different depending on which example you look at. So just be aware of that. Now, originally I tried to follow this example and it was really, really helpful just for the original setup. So shout out to Steve. Steve, you're amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. That was really helpful, but it was using the old version and it didn't really work that example because it didn't like I couldn't no. <laughs> so what else? So here's the installation guide. They will also link for in Ingress X in engine no, engine X Ingress controller that way around. So you can find basically for all those different providers, you can find the according uh, controller, right? I'm going to use engine X. They are also different in and other Ingress providers, controllers controllers and you can use them too. I'm just using the engine X one, it's something else to be aware of. So right now this page, when I load it, it's not going to show anything, but we're going to change that. This, I deleted everything. So this can't show anything anymore here. Okay. So what else do we have here? Well, there's also, there's a setup guide for how to do it on, is it that one? No. Is it this one? Yeah, so these basically the Stack Overflow questions help me greatly. And then it's specifically this issue provided the solution to all of my problems, more or less. 
So you can find the entire guide on my GitHub. I'm gonna post everything now on my Notion page. My Notion page might has some additional context, some additional resources and stuff. So you can find the link to that below. However, I also record now everything on GitHub if I have hands-on examples, because that allows me to keep it up to date. It allows other people to contribute, making it more amazing, this community of 100 days of Kubernetes, right? So let's get to the actual tutorial, what we're actually going to do. Now, once you clean, clean <laughs> once you clone this repository, as you can see, we have two deployment files. Each deployment file has basically one deployment resource and one service resource. Now the service resource is of type cluster IP, which is provide selector app test first. And that's basically referring to the label app test first and matching the labels up of the service. Now, once we have that, it's basically we created a deployment and a service, right? So the other one is pretty much similar, the, the other deployment. And then we have basically here two apps they are just basic Python Flask example apps. Just they don't do much. They just post a message. And yeah, so as you can see, they are two. And what I did first, I basically you clone the repository, then you get into the repository, you get into one of those apps and you build the Docker image, you push it to your Docker hub. And then you get in the other one, you do the same thing. You push those two. So you have basically Flask one and Flask two. And I have to change this one. Um, so once you have those two, we're going to apply the resources, deployment one and deployment two, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, right now we are in this repository. So if I just list everything out, you can see there's exactly the same thing as in the Git repository that I just showed you. Now over here, we want to deploy the deployment one and deployment two YAML file, right? So we're just going to say, well, let me just show you that really there's nothing else installed. So as you can see, this is my default namespace, which I'm going to use in this case. And then QPL get namespace. Now I'm using this cluster for some other experimentation. So as you can see, I have Argo CD and Crossplane, but just don't care about those right now. We are just going to go ahead and we are going to deploy those two YAML files. So we're going to say QPL apply and then file uh, deployment one dot yaml so we're going to create it as you can see it created a deployment resource and a service resource and now we can go ahead and get all of our resources in the default namespace and you can see that our test first deployment is running it has a deployment it has a replica set of one. We didn't specify how many replicas we actually want in that deployment. So it's just going to run one. And then we have here our service that is of type cluster IP and basically connecting to port 8080 and port 8080 is the port that's exposed by the application. So this is sometimes confusing. Basically, as you can see here, I specified that I want to connect this app should be running on port 8080. So in the Docker file, I'm also exposing port 8080. And then over here in the service, let's go back to the service. It's also using port 8080. Okay. So it's basically mapping the container port to the port that the application runs on. And then the service is connecting to that container port that the, or that's exposed basically within the Docker file. Yeah within my container image. So let's go ahead and go back to our terminal. Now we want to apply the other deployment, right? So we're going to go ahead, kubectl apply file and then deployment two. And that's going to create two more resources, another deployment, another service, kubectl get all. As you can see now, they are all up and running. Now, where does Ingress come in? Well, we have to deploy the Ingress controller. So in this case, I'm going to actually, I'm using, yeah, um, I'm using over here. Where can we find it here? I'm using the Docker for Mac because I read that that works the same way. It just works the same way for both, whether I'm using Mac or Windows. So I'm going to use that. And as you can see here, I have to correct something as well with the stars because there was bold and it shouldn't be. Anyway, so don't ignore the stars. Anyway, 
So we're gonna go back to our terminal and we're gonna say we want to apply this resource, right? We want to deploy this controller. Now this is gonna spin up a bunch of resources. Ooh, what's happening here, right? You can see at the beginning that we have like role binding that is basically then used to create underneath that role several resources. We have a namespace first created and we have a service account, config map, what else? Services created, we have deployment created and so on. Now, obviously I, I don't know the details of everything that I just deployed on a cluster. So we're gonna look at it. Kupala get all in namespace engine x ingress, was it that way? Ingress engine x, give around. Ingress engine x, okay. So this is everything that's deployed within that namespace. And that's the first path that we need. We need that ingress controller. That's the main part that we need because without it, otherwise and nothing is gonna work. So in this case, it's basically connecting to um, localhost, yeah? Connecting to localhost. So we have a load balancer type of thing that the ingress is and it's connecting to localhost. Now this is running. There might be some crash loop back off at the beginning don't worry about it. It will just spin up, hopefully, probably. Anyway, so this is all nice. Now let's clear this up. And now we want to deploy the ingress that we have put up here. That's also within that repository, right? So in this ingress, basically, let, let me walk you through it. It, at the beginning, specifies the type ingress. It's just named simple example. And then it has some annotations. Now more on those annotations in a second. Then it has a default backend. The default backend basically refers to if we don't have a specific path, which application, which backend is gonna be served? What are we gonna see, right? And then I'm saying, okay, it's, it refers to the test second. So we're gonna see the test second resource service, um, the deployment two basically that we deployed, uh, if we don't specify one of those paths. Now in the rules section, we specify the host. And I found out that if you're using Docker desktop, you should use this as your host, kubernetes.docker.internal, and then everything is working nicely. Surprise, surprise. Now, <laughs> then within you, the paths, we specify path one. So when we put basically this URL and then path one, we're gonna see test first service, right? And it basically has the port 8080, that service. Now, same, accounts for path two, and then we just connect to test second service. And you can compare basically the service and what's happening here within that, I hope you can see this, Oof. within this file, right? And here the annotation is basically needed because without the annotation, it cannot find those paths. I'm gonna show you that in a second, but without the annotation, it couldn't find the paths. So we're gonna go ahead and we say, kubectl uh, apply file, and then we want to apply the ingress resource, right? That's gonna create that. Now, let's wait a second, and make sure that everything is gonna work properly. And then we can open up our application. And as you can see now, now it's working. It tells me, hello world, this is app two. And this is basically the message provided by deployment two. Now, if we go ahead and we specify the path one, at the end, we're gonna say this is app one. If we specify the path two, we're gonna be at path two. And as you can see, then you can specify basically the different paths to your different microservice applications. Woo, it's working. And <laughs> let me show you that basically if I'm, oh, let me clean this up for a second, this is ugly. So here, we are again on this ingress resource. And in this case, the thing is, if I remove this annotation, let me just remove this, and then new terminal and kubectl apply file ingress, just for demonstration purposes. So now I basically changed how the ingress is configured in this case. I removed the annotation, right? And now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to path two can't find that path anymore. And that's what I was stuck with until I found this issue. No, this, no, this issue on <laughs> the different paths, basically how you configure them, right? Which is amazing that I found that. Anyway, so going back to 
not found, right? However, if I go to my default backend, right, it can find it. It's the same application that's served on the default backend as on path two. But if I go on path one, it cannot find it. So let's patch this up again. Let's put again in our annotations, right? And then we're gonna say the same thing. We're gonna just apply the ingress. And now path one should work again. And here we are, as simple as that. If you know how it's done, it's like, Easy peasy. So this is it for the day. I hope it was useful. If it was, please do remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I would highly appreciate your support. Also, if you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, anything you want to mention or anything you should look at in the next days, then just join our Discord community or comment below and I would be happy to hear from you. I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.